we're doing uh, part, part number 14 and oh, I'm really, really trying to find everything and explore properly. Supposedly this is around 7 hours long and I think I'm on 9. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna, we are after the kidnapper. Okay, we are, I mean. Detective Karambi is after the kidnapper, and uh, the next clue I told us uh, we gotta go to uh, some kind of bridge. You know, I don't know where that is because there is no map, but we always find it because the fog is blocking everything. What the? This is so trippy. Like the Crow over there. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? Oh, look. A croak, maybe. Which way now? There's the bridge. Let's, let's go here first. Oh, there is something. Seriously? What the? Doesn't make you happy. That's not look creepy at all. I can't believe I didn't recognize you. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? I 
do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. That's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again, then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself. I'm down there with him, remember? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car. There must be a way to save you both, right? Why else would I be here? Don't worry, kid. I'll think of something. She said, I'm down there. No way. Poor Hachi. This must be where the bridge is operated. Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back. Ugh.
There we go. We should be able to pilot. had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. He could have saved him. There was time. He just chose not to. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. Ooh. Okay, pilot the boat by the house to the sinking car.
Oh my God, Carnby. Are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house. Now get out! <sighs> hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. <sighs> this place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I want to know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Stole the child and let him drown. Yep. My goodness. Where am I now? Oh, yeah, that was the toilet. I'm not going in there. She's okay. clearly had enough of me. And that's closed as well. Pay Dr. Gray a visit in his apartment. In his apartment? Which is where? Aha. Uh -huh. You can see it now. Dr. Gray's apartment. I don't remember being there. Grace's room is still... For some reason. Ah, uh, this is a wall. How can I get there? Straight ahead, to the right, to the right. Now everything is closed. That is open by itself. Detective, am I glad to see you? Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us snooping around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. Help Emery Hardwood look for clues. The past is the present. The item, Fool's Book. Myth of the Golden Fleece. It's a hollow book. There's a book missing. Uh huh. What did you do? I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. Man, the view here. I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion.
furniture key. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the black goat of the woods with a thousand young, or Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. You think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jaren? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. Still? I've been so busy trying to free your uncle from the promise he made to the Dark Man. I guess I kind of just let everything else go. Don't worry, Detective. I feel like we're close. I'm sure Jeremy will turn up. If he is part of the cult, he wouldn't want to miss the Feast of St. John. I just need enough information to make him see the truth. I hope you're right, but I doubt he'll show up. Not as long as the Dark Man's got him hiding. To finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from Desetto, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No. Juan Luis Jorge. Wait there a moment. Juan Luis hey, take a look. Jorge. Is he? Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life changing, even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Heartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. The doctor has a really creepy voice. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? 
The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vachy, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text, that it would be more appropriate with Worm Dagger from the Latin Vermis Cultrum. This seems natural following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince's book, The Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prince certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning, only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire. That to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy, that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. My goodness, so does that mean that Jeremy is possessed by some kind of de demon? Where's the phone? Uh -huh. Hello? Detective can't be. Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the Dark Man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. Was that Jeremy or what's his name, the guy who was drunk all the time? Okay. 
okay. Yeah, but which way I'm looking at? Where's the dagger? Oh, Jesus, I had no idea. Why did I even open the furniture? So what is this clue? Okay, da, da, da. and then opposite arrow a little bit tilted I'm gonna try one more time what is that <sighs> toy talisman okay Arrow, arrow, yeah, that was like this.
Really? You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. Detective Combe was worried Emily could tell. That she could see the madness written on his face. But... What if he was the only one seeing the truth? Could that still be the case? If only he could find evidence that would make her understand that he had seen beyond the veil, or at least something that would show her he was worth the money she was paying him. Enter to another Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna wanna see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going <laughs> inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, Detective. Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to. Jesus Christ. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. So on. She's so annoying. So what's the story when you play as Emily? He's doing the same shit. So we are in another world. Another wall. Frenzy. gun ah, I got a hold flares why do I need We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. 
Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares, and headed toward the coast and up the climb, towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Hashtan. Go, and never come back. And so I left. That's creepy.